Hi, it's Matt. Um, just want to say why would you want to hire a virtual assistant? Um, I think this is something that most people are not really thinking of at the moment, is actually hiring a virtual assistant. Um, because to hire one, you would actually start to see the value in having somebody do it. Um, but if you don't, then you really can't see it because you can't see a value until you've actually got um, something of something that enhances your life. I mean, that's the only real phrase I could really use because it's not really monetary uh, directly. It's about actually getting your time back. Um, it can be monetary, but a lot of it is time orientated. The first thing I would say, though, is outsourcing things like uh, somebody to deal with your daily emails, uh, somebody to screen your calls, uh, and uh, somebody to do your invoicing, things like that, are going to make your life a lot easier. And depending on how busy you are, we'll tell you how many hours you're going to get back a day, and is it viable? Um, because I know myself, um, from the UK, there's a lot of tedious stuff. Um, there's a lot of regulations that you get stuck with um, that you have to deal with. It's not it's not whether you want to do it or not. It's that you have to do it. Now, having somebody capable and for a pretty low fee going through that stuff for me um, would actually make everything extremely viable. Why? Well, the, fir the first thing is if somebody is dealing with things like my stock orders for uh, a business, they're assessing the number of sales, then re doing a restock on what um, the tariffs are preset. It's something that could be almost automated, um, but the fact is it's not, and they could simply go, okay, you did five of B, six of Z, blah, 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 and they just deal with it. And you, do, you don't even have to get involved anymore. Um, it, and Because it, it could even do the invoicing and the payment system, blah, blah, blah. And then you're starting to find that stuff that you used to have to sit and do on Friday night, you're no longer doing on Friday at all. Um, and this is where it starts to offset how much your time is to how much they're actually costing you. Um, so, if that took four hours on a Friday, how much was that four hours that you already? Because I know my, my day rate in the UK is 350 pounds per day. Um, now, if somebody did some of my administration for 40 pounds a day, I, I may, I'm making money from sitting in the pub or reading a book um, because they're actually generating more money than they cost um, just by doing my administration. But at the same time, there's other things that are critical, which I can't do while I'm driving. Um, for example, hourly timesheets for the week just completed. Those need to be uh, submitted by Monday morning at the latest. So if I actually have somebody that's been monitoring my records, they could actually see how many hours I did. Um, which means they could submit it via email. Um, these roosters are so annoying in the background. Um, but they can actually submit it ahead of me, which means my payments are always on time. Because there's always a delayment on payments, um, which are sometimes done on purpose because if the fax machine's um, over um, out of paper, um, because you know obviously if everybody faxes it on first thing Monday morning. Of course, it's going to be out of paper. But that bit of paper is how they administer everything. Um, so that could be outsourced. And it's a critical bit of outsourcing. It's your next, it's your next payout. Um, so there's certain things that you, you could outsource. I mean, the, the thing is, you could outsource nearly everything. Um, your car needs new tires. You haven't got time to do it yourself. But you could actually have your virtual assistant call around and get the best deal on the tires and actually even tell you, text over to you, um, John Smith Motors are doing a deal this week, two for one, blah, blah, blah. 
he says, take it in um, before five o'clock tonight if you want it done. And, you know, and these are the sort of things you may not have time to do yourself, but even when they do that, they're actually saving you money. Um, so it becomes very hard to see no value in it because they're actually saving you money and time. Um, even if the task is, um, what, what would you say? Even if the task is something that's a bit more expensive than you would do. For example, I'm not a person who's very good at writing resumes. So I'm actually going to have somebody go over my resume and improve it. Um, all the information's there, but it's all about presentation. Um, I'm good at selling myself person to person uh, without the roosters. Um, but in a situation where you need to get the interview in the first place, my resume does need polishing up a bit. And that, that's part of it, is also recognizing something you're not good at. Um, resume writing is not my uh, forte. Um, but there is many things that I can do, um, which I was struggling to get a BA to do, but it doesn't mean I can't train them to do it. I mean, that, that's, that's the unique thing about the VAs. Motivates now. Um, but the thing is, you can actually turn around and teach somebody. You can actually teach somebody how to do things um, that they may not have learned before. And why, why I say that's important is that the fact is, you should develop your VA. Um, because I know some people will say, my VA is crap. They don't know how to do the Excel, blah, blah, blah. Maybe it's formulas. Maybe they don't know how to use Word properly. They, their punctuation is not 100%. Um, but who's, who's going to teach them? Um, because I know from dealing with people myself that I'm training up and t taught how to do the virtual assistant role and other stuff like programming and other things, is sometimes the punctuation and language issues just need to be fully understood. Because if you're, if everything's taught by the same type of people, uh, what I mean is the same nationalities, the same mistakes are passed on. Um, I mean, here in the Philippines, I can hear politicians make the same verbal mistakes in English that um, somebody left school does. Because it's actually taught that way. The teachers teach the incorrect phrasing and use of the words. But you could sit and teach somebody how to do it. Um, we do transcription. Transcription was part of that, where the feedback was the important bit. Because you put something in, and you get a 70% pass rate. But everything highlights where it's wrong and what, what went wrong. All our transcription lists are about 99% now. Um, the 1% the is often things like people's obscure names or something that just didn't make sense in the video. That, you know, you can't hear what they're saying. Um, so it's, it's normally not the transcription's fault. They're, you know, they're not miracle workers. At the same time, it's a quick correction. If you actually know what they actually said and what was blurred, it becomes very quick to fix. Uh, so, not a major problem. Now, that's, that's part of the virtual system thing, is not hopping around from one company to the next, because it's not actually going to benefit you. Because if you're looking for the lowest dollar possible and not willing to invest any time in the, the virtual system, they are all going to be terrible. Um, they'll be okay for emails and things like that but they're not going to be structured as well as somebody that's fluent in English. And they're also not going to be able to do your website and other things because they don't know how to. Now, they're not people that don't, like I said, they're not people that don't know how to do it. It's people that haven't been taught how to do it. And there's a very big difference because if we can get a VA to do an hour a day, um, for example, somebody who does your emails just for screening, um, maybe you get 500 emails a day. They sit and filter through all your emails, and they also reply to some of them. That's you know like low-level things, uh, subscriptions and things like that. Or um, they call your um, dry cleaners to tell them can you deliver after four? 
because you, you're at work all day, or, you know, small tasks you can build up from. Because that hour a day um, starts off like that, but then you know, okay, well, I need you to learn how to do this. And then you start um, teaching them new things and pushing the boundaries a little bit. Because the more you do it, the more they'll develop. Because it's in their interest. If they can go from one hour to eight hours a day, they're more than happy. But they can only get to that eight hours by taking on these extra tasks. And that's just why it's ta this is why it's task-based. Um, and it's very important that the time investment goes into people. Um, that's why VAs have a good and bad feedback because I find the ones that complain that VAs are crap, waste of money, waste of time. It's the same with the people that go, our source is rubbish, we had poor productivity, we had poor results, blah, blah, blah. It's because you mismanaged them. They, sorry, that's the only way to say it. They, they've been mismanaged. The outsourcers will only work with the tools they're given. Now, if you give them the wrong information or assume things, you're going to have problems. You have to be very direct, very specific, and almost childlike at the beginning. But this is part of the investment in your VA, is you take the time to make sure it's right. Because over time, it becomes perfect. You're no longer messaging your VA in the morning. They're messaging you at night with everything that's already completed. They already know what they're doing. And that's when you start to know that A, the VA is viable, but B, you're starting to think, you know what, tonight I'm going to go to college because I don't have any paperwork. <laughs> you know, you have time. And on top of that, you can actually be putting your time to more use. Um, some of that is not even direct usage. Um, what I mean is, if I own a furniture business, for example, I might already have a VA dealing with the incoming calls, dealing with orders, dealing with processing. And the next stage of that is actually having some outbound sales guys pushing the targets. That is not me on the phone, that's them on the phone. They, this is the beauty of it, is once you start that, like I said, the one hour a day, you build up from it, you go, yeah, this works, this is good. Um, and then go, okay, can you make sure my laundry is done? Can you uh, call the carpenter on Friday to tell, tell them that I need them in Saturday um, to work on the conservatory. You start to build up these little tasks where during the day you'll just sit and list all these things down, but also your VA is going to continue with the day-to-day -day tasks. So you, you continuously feeding work to them, where it's only going to take you a minute, but for them it might take them an hour, two hours, whatever, depending on what they're doing, but you're delegating everything away from you, which means that you're working more productively. Because if you've got the time available to you, um, it becomes more like, um, it's, you can deal with the important stuff. Um, not that all the small tasks are irrelevant and unimportant, but the fact is, instead of like having to deal with it in four hours time when you've finished everything else, you can deal with it now. Um, from the stuff I've done before, it's very, very important because um, I'll give you a prime example. Uh, working with social housing properties, you'll find there's a lot of problems on them. Um, substandard work, whatever, whatever reasons gone on. But some of them are reoccurring problems. Um, say, for example, somebody's got a drafted window and the builder doesn't turn up. They call again and report it as another job. And then they call again and again and again. And they'll keep calling every day until you do something. Now, if you were dealing with those emails, you'll find 20 of the emails you received that day were from the same person because um, they, they've done it every day. And what, I mean, what, see, the thing from the, these are inherited uh, problems because uh, generally I go in and fix these things where um, this surveyor or whatever was doing it before um, got bogged down for whatever reason and I'm basically there to declutter their life. Um, so things like that are very, very common. 
because if you imagine, okay, well, that's only one a day. Yes, one email a day, which is put as a task on the system, which is created as a job on the system, but it's all fictitious because there's only one job, it's just that you've got 20 jobs from the one because they keep calling. Um, now, those things clog up the system. Now, if you've got like 100 people doing the same, which they do, um, they realize that the more they complain, the more they, they're likely to get something done, um, then the system thinks it's got, um, I think the last major one I had was nearly 6,000 jobs. Um, within a month, that was under 1,000. And within three months, the jobs were actually under 100. They were done as they come in. Um, primarily, this is things like that where killing the emails. See what? Because a lot of time, people will deal with the emails as they come in. Good, 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 good. But if you bulk them, bulk them together and then filter them through, um, you can reduce a lot of the tasks very quickly. And an outsourced agent would know how to do that. I mean, I know how to do it, but a lot of times this doesn't get done because people are too busy, but they're too busy because they're generating tasks that don't don't even need to exist. Um, and then this is part of the cycle where people are a lot busier than they should be, but it, it's often for non-existent stuff. And that 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 is the big issue for me, is the fact is that the VA is actually removed some of that stuff. I mean, for me, it's very... Uh, practical, and my whole business is based on efficiency. Um, but the, the fact is many people get to a point where they can't really recover the time because they don't have time to recover the time that they, they're wasting. Um, that email thing where it happens every day and a new job's created is a prime example. You can filter it through. You know, the problem I have, and I can sit and explain how to do it, and how I think, but it's not how they think, uh, because it's based on priorities and other things where the certain things I do, they don't do. Um, but task-based um, VAs would understand the system, but also even if you had five, 6,000 real jobs that needed doing, they could sit and prioritize and filter them for you. A lot easier for them to do, because when it's at that level, you need to be face to face with as many people as possible to start putting ticks in boxes that it's completed, it's in process, it's being done, and you don't do that from the office. That, that That's the reality of it. If you're actually task-based, where you're sat dealing with all the emails, you cannot go out on the road. Yet, it's on the road that actually puts the little ticks to say it's complete, it's in process, so, um, contracts have been contacted, blah, blah, blah. And that's a prime example of a good VA would actually make your life uh, a happy life instead of a living hell. Um, and there's so much scope for that sort of stuff in the UK. Um, and the, one of the reasons I'm going back to the UK at the moment is because I can see where I can make people's lives easier. And when I've got my spare time, I'm going to be bugging people and saying, okay, well, why haven't you got Saturday available for the kids? Uh, why aren't you coming to the football at the weekend? <laughs> you know, because uh, I've got so much paperwork to do. What paperwork is it? Can I see it? You know, it, it gets to that point where I can actually turn around and say, you know what, how much is it really worth to you? Would you rather have the football on the Saturdays or would you rather have your Saturday full of paperwork? Because it might only cost like 20 quid a week to have somebody else do it for you. Um, not that I encourage outsourcing anything that's actual uh, under the Data Protection Act or an illegal uh, obligation, but there's a lot of work that you can filter out that needs to be completed, but isn't um, specific, e.g. Um, generic reports which need to go with 500 different files, um, but there's nothing actually different between them, they just have to be processed. Um, there's a lot of stuff, but the whole point with me is, I would say, what would a VA do for you? Um, because most of the stuff, when you, 
if I said that to you, I think the first thought is, I don't know. But just say the thing, oh, is there stuff that you think someone else could do for you if, um, that would actually add some value to it? Um, car tax, for example. Doing a lot of stuff online. Um, a lot, you know, there's so many things. And, and to be honest, I'm going to start outsourcing more and more of my stuff um, because, from a personal point of view, I need to go back to college. And I can only do that if I actually outsource maybe 80% of the stuff I already do. And looking at it, it's not hard to do. Um, I've got three three VAs that actually work for me uh, behind me uh, in the other building here, and there's nothing to stop me getting them to take some of my workload um, because they all have different skill sets. You now, one of them's good at making videos, another one's good at um, writing documents and programming, and another one is good for transcription. And other general tasks, but the fact is, between them, there isn't a lot they can't do. Uh, anyway, I uh, just want to talk to be a quick talk about VAs and what they can do for you. And I'd be interested if you could feedback and comments on what you think they could do for you. And if you're using one, what do you think? Are they good? Have you saved money? Have you saved time? Have they added value? Uh, let me know. Uh, 